hello in this video we will discuss about the reflex arc basically we will learn about the polysynaptic and monosynaptic reflex arc so the, what is the polysynaptic poly mean many synaptic mean the synapse while the mono mean one so that's neuromuscular junction synapse so subconscious moves this is the reflex arc is the subconscious moves when the hammer will put on to the arm or something will jerk we uh, create the uh, moves and this moves is known as a reflex arc and for example patellar knee will lead to jerk of the uh, our ankle which that will lead to uh, curl the finger of the tube uh, of the uh, feet and uh, basically so the reflex arc is basically uh, is a neuro wiring neuro wiring mean the wiring uh, nervous system of a single reflex and involve the five step so what is the five step we will learn here in this manner for easy to understand so this is the simple diagram of the spinal cord the cross section which that is anterior and posterior view so this is the center nervous system the spinal cord while this is the hand is a part of peripheral nervous system and this uh, dorsal root of ganglion and ventral root of ganglion is the peripheral nervous system part. So this is the when the stimulus receptor will receive through a needle when touch into the hand. So the afferent neuron or sensory neuron will give the signal toward the central nervous system. After the central nervous system, this basically is the efferent neuron. After the interneuron, the processing will complete, will go the inter, uh, efferent neuron as a sensory neuron in the fourth step, uh, will lead to contract the muscle after the neuromuscular junction for depolarization of the muscle fiber, muscle cell, will lead to response as a factor to become a fist from the open hand. So this is the dorsal root of ganglion, ventral root of ganglion and interneuron is basically only present in the, uh, in the central nervous system while the peripheral nervous system contains sensory and motor neuron. So the classification on the basis of the reflexes we will discuss. So the development, response, complexity and the processing we can classify it and in this way here is the innate reflex and acquired reflex should be and this basically the innate mean uh, after birth basically and uh, when we will born so this is a rudimentary while the acquired reflex is adaptive and here is the response is a somatic reflex superficial deep uh, visceral reflex or autonomic while the complexity is basically the monosynaptic reflex or polysynaptic reflex. So this processing site is spinal cord and cranial reflex. Cranial means the brain. So brain is also involved. We will discuss in the end of this video. So first of all we should need to understand the monosynaptic reflexes. So the patella reflex is the best example for understanding to you. So let's here is the leg which that's contain a patella and the uh, uh, and the humerus humerus bone which that is bone and this chondricep is the upper part. This chondricep is basically is the con uh, 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 flexor muscle while the uh, downside is a basically uh, 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 gluteus muscle you can understand down muscle basically is the uh, extensor so this is the muscle which does contain tendon and this is the extra fusal muscle fiber this is a basically will lead to get the muscle tone while here is the tendon which that is attached with the bone because the bone to tendon binding is known as the 
uh, it is known as bone, bone to muscle binding the tendon while the ligament is muscle to muscle attachment while here is the intrafusal muscle intrafusal muscle within the uh, extrafusal muscle and this is the used for the receptor and this is receive uh, the signal and this is the muscle spindle uh, after this here is the basically is the blue color line is the afferent neuron this afferent neuron is the basically a motor neuron which that will trigger and this is a receptor will uh, lead to uh, um, uh, receive the signal and the afferent neuron which that will lead to contract and basically the uh, uh, if you understand this is the you can understand here so this is the lag which that when we will uh, uh, forcefully put the uh, hammer to the knee so the knee uh, the jerk will occur and the uh, leg will move out and in this way here is the chondriceps basically is the uh, afferent neuron or sensory neuron will give the signal toward the efferent neurons motor neurons and in this way the motor neuron will um, neuromuscular junction with the uh, chondriceps and will lead to contract and in this way the uh, contraction will occur and will lead to move upward this leg and this basically is the extrafusal muscle fibers this extrafusal muscle fiber will lead to muscle tone so remember while the efferent neuron this efferent is the basically the motor neuron will directly contra uh, attach then through neuromuscular junction the muscle stimuli contraction muscle tone lead to muscle tone and the depression will occur and in this way remember this basically is the depression due to the extra fusal muscle fiber to stimulate and the efferent neuron is responsible for the stimulation so let us begin to understand the steps so here is the intrafusal muscle this intrafusal muscle fiber is a muscle spindle basically which that is the receptor will receive the signal as a stimulus will lead to afferent, afferent neuron stimulation will lead to sensory neuron so the sensory neuron is very important after this sensory neuron will lead to give the information uh, processing site a spinal cord and the spinal cord basically is the central nervous system parts contain a interneuron so the efferent neuron after the interneuron the stimulation through synapse will lead to motor neuron this motor neuron is the extra fusal muscle fiber stimulation so the extra fusal muscle fiber stimulation will lead to effect and this is the patella reflex so this is the patella reflex and after this is basically the polysynaptic reflex this polysynaptic reflex is uh, let's begin to understand that was the monosynaptic but and now we will discuss about the polysynaptic so the polysynaptic means the more than one uh, neuromuscular junction or the, um, you can hear the stimulus the lead to receptor the sensory neuron which that will lead to afferent sensory neuron this afferent sensory neuron will interconnect through a spinal cord uh, with the uh, interneuron through uh, uh, and uh, to processing after the processing uh, the communication um, processing will lead to go into the uh, into the uh, um, into the different uh, side of the muscle and in this way here you can see this is the multiple synapse will be occur and in this way here is the flexor muscle which that will lead to contract while the chondriceps will lead to extend and in this way that relax more and in this way that is why because the uh, another region of the spinal cord which that is communicate uh, collectively and in this way you can understand and in this way the flexor muscle which that will lead to contract uh, and basically and in this way the chondriceps will be relaxed and this chondriceps will relax will lead to move back the move back the uh, move back the leg 
and this is the basic model for understanding so in this way you can understand this is the spinal cord which that is contain a different region for the interconnection is known as the polysynaptic reflexes and this is a polysynaptic reflex because multiple synapse and that is why here you can see this is a move back this uh, leg so anyhow the if the if the motor neuron which that will lead to lesion or some problem which that will lead to severed hypotonia severed hypotonia means the flexed muscle and in this way the muscle will not move uh, easily and in this way the motor neuron which that will not give the signal so the muscle will will not relax or contract easily so in this way uh, the slow very slow and here if the uh, interneuron or the inhibitory neuron will not work so the hypertonia for example the spastic uh, muscle and that's that is due to the tetanus um, uh, causes a problem which that will lead to tetanus infection so for example here is the let's begin to understand also the uh, also the um, uh, cranial reflex so in this way here you can see when the uh, uh, in uh, enter the stimulus which that will lead to sensory neuron sensory neuron means the uh, uh, afferent neuron which that will get the signal as a sensory neuron toward the spinal cord after toward the spinal cord the interneuron which that will integration and after this integration it will uh, directly contact through a neuromuscular junction with the extensor and the flexor muscle so after this the more than one synapse will occur to a uh, here you can see and in this way the basically basically when this extensor muscle will um, uh, contract while uh, the flexor muscle will relax due to the multiple the polysynapse and in this way here you can see the single stimulus will lead to contract and the, that is why the uh, when the knee will jerk through a hammer and the patella hammer uh, patella hammer which that will lead to uh, jerk out so that is why this is the mechanism while on the other hand the uh, 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 other hand we can understand the same things so here you can see this is the upper motor neuron in the brain the voluntary reflex it is the conscious reflex and in this way this is will lead to the pyramidal system which that are present in the spinal cord and which that will lead to uh, inhibit the movement uh, un, uh, subconscious to the conscious movement so in this way here you can see this is a pyramidal uh, interconnection and this is basically is the integration and the interneuron which that will lead to get the motor neuron after the sensation of something of the feet so this is the feet and in this way you can understand the uh, 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 this is the foot and in this way here you can see the afferent neuron this afferent neuron which that is basically is the gives the signal uh, toward the uh, feet for the contraction and that is why the contraction will occur uh, toward the uh, tip of the finger of the uh, hand of the of the feet and this the two two will be uh, move uh, inside so this is the afferent neuron and in this way the inside movement of the uh, fingers while the babinski sign is that in this way the pyramidal lesion this pyramidal lesion will lead to change the uh, movement of the foot and in this way the curl uh, up and fan out the fingers of the foot but the babinski sign is also a uh, true lesion and also during the infant the pyramidal sign shows as a developmental time so the babinski sign will show and in this way uh, i hope you make sense about the reflex arc and the polysynaptic and the monosynaptic 
so that is the overview about the reflex arcs thanks for watching bye